Greetings fellow collectors. This episode is the second part of my artillery, which I promised you in episode 11. In this segment, I'm going to talk about and show you some of my artillery pieces, which have a gun team or figures associated with them. As you'll see, I have an assortment of stuff which many of you will recognize as having seen at shows in yours or others collections. I actually like what is out there in terms of artillery and if you combine those pieces I presented in episode 11 with these items in today's episode you'll see what I mean. I should warn you that my definition of what constitutes artillery is not hard and fast so as I go along some of you may take exception to pieces which I have categorized as artillery but hey, how serious are we talking? So sit back, pour yourself a beverage and relax. If you want to go back and see episode 11, I'll leave a link in the description. This first piece is a bit of a cheat. It's a Fort Henry gun team from Good Soldiers of England. And I've simply bolted them to a Britain's naval cannon. If you've ever been to Fort Henry in Kingston, Ontario, you'll see quite a few British cannons scattered around the outside and inside of the fort like surplus metal left to the elements. Next is another Fort Henry set from La Belle's, which I purchased from Scott Dummett Presents. As some of you already know, Fort Henry pieces are something I always have my eye out for. This is slightly different from the Good Soldiers, which you just saw earlier. And I'll place them together so that you can see what they look like side by side. This set of King and Country figures are from the 1990s and I purchased it from their store in Hong Kong. It's number RA2, Guards with Maxim Gun. It's gloss and it also appeared before in episode 3. While the episode is entitled Artillery, I think, and I could be wrong, but back in the late 19th century this Maxim gun could have been characterized as artillery and King and Country did provide the same set but with Royal Artillery figures. If you saw episode number one, King and Country Kriegsmarine, then this 20mm anti-aircraft artillery piece is familiar. I purchased it from the Ottawa Toy Soldier Market, which closed its doors this June after a long run. When I bought the set, and it's actually two sets, number LW054 and LW055, I did so with the thought of incorporating it with my Kriegsmarine. Even though the gunners are ostensibly Luftwaffe, I didn't think the discerning eye would tell the difference between a Kriegsmarine or a Luftwaffe crew. On a visit to London about 15 years ago, I was in the tradition of London store and I was looking for a French artillery set dating to the French and Indian Wars. I ended up buying this set labeled French and Indian War French Artillery Number 617. And while you may look askance at the naval cannon, I'm told that in New France, the defense of the French territories such as Quebec City, Louisiana, Louisbourg, the Pontiac, etc., fell under the authority of the French Navy. Thus, it would only make sense that part of the artillery available to French forces would include naval cannons. This picture of one of the cannons at Louisburg Fortress being fired illustrates this point. I think you will agree that tradition hit the mark, right down to the uniform colors and cannon. Another artillery piece I purchased from tradition is the Indian Army Mountain Artillery Set number 065. I think it's a limited edition as it's numbered 441 out of 500 and has appeared before in episode 4. Here I have assembled it with its related gun team and pack mules. In fact, this is the first time I have put it together. Normally, I think we just leave it disassembled on the pack mules. Has anyone else assembled their artillery to see what it looks like? These next few sets are Britons and will be familiar to many of you. They date back to the late 1990s, early 2000s. I'll start with this U.S. Army World War II howitzer and crew, number 17459. It's been boxed almost its entire time as I haven't figured out what to do with it. The bane of many collectors, I suppose, pieces which are in a box or a container, somewhere in a closet or a basement. 
It looks pretty good, and I'm reluctant to let go of it for now. These next pieces come from Britain's as well. It's from the Premier series, which ran from 1995 to 1998, and then resumed 2003 to 2005. If you want to learn more about the Premier series, I would urge you to get a hold of James Opie's book, Britain's Toy Soldiers, The History and Handbook, 1893 to 2013, which was published in 2016. Now the first is a World War I Thornycroft anti-aircraft gun. I've seen a few of these reappear from other makers. This is set number 41036. I liked how the gun is mobile combined with the old Thornycroft truck. Imagine trying to hit a biplane with this on a cold rainy day on the western front. Now take a look at this photo. It's dated 1918 from the Canadian Archives and it's entitled Crews Relaxed Near Their Anti-Aircraft Motor Lorries Armed with QF 13 pounder 9 cubic weight anti-aircraft guns. Look familiar? Next is the World War I British 6 inch howitzer with crew set number 41029. The crew wears the soft peak caps versus the steel Brody helmets later introduced during the war. Now here's a picture from World War I of Canadian artillery training on this howitzer in England at the Whitley camp. Following along the lines of the earlier King and Country Maxim gun set, I have a Marlboro Military Models which I think is set number 36, Royal Artillery Gatling Gun and Crew. I bought this from another collector, and the sharp-eyed amongst you may have seen this in episode 4. Like the King and Country piece, I have included this because in the late 19th century, pieces like this would have likely been included in the inventory and manned by the Royal Artillery. This is another World War I artillery set from Britain's number 41024 and it's a German 7.7 millimeter gun with limber and crew. Note that the figures are wearing the classic steel helmet and the gun and limber are camouflaged. Now here's a picture that appears in the Imperial War Museum of that same gun, albeit cleaned up and not camouflaged. Now I put together the two guns, the British six inch and this one, so you can get a better appreciation of what the two of them look like. I'm sure most of you recognize this set immediately. It's been replicated by many makers since Britain's first introduced it back in 1896 as set number 39. This is set number 44053 King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery with the 13 pound quick firing gun and crew. I bought this at the Guards Toy Soldier Center in London. Unfortunately, the store closed in uh, early 2021, and so I'm not even sure if there's any brick and mortar toy soldier shops still left in London. They used to carry an assortment of figures from Britain's King and Country, and sometimes you used to be able to find other makers there. It was sort of a nice uh, place to go to. It was situated near the Guards Regiment Museum. And it was about five minutes walk from Buckingham Palace, but sign of the times. This CBG Mignot set number 590 was shown on episode number 10. I purchased this in Paris at Le Galerie Lafayette. I liked how the set appears in its own little diorama in the presentation box. It's a nice marketing touch and is a trademark of Mignot. Often you can buy many of its sets like this, but of course the price increases. I have a funny story about purchasing this set, but you'll have to see episode 10 to hear it. This is the Frontline WB-1A World War II British 5.5 inch gun with crew. I bought it from the Ottawa Toy Soldier Market, and I think at the time it was the store's last of this set, and for the price I paid I was really surprised at the number of figures which came with it. I think it was a bit of a bargain. I already have some Crescent 5.5 inch cannons that appeared in episode 12 and you can see these uh, as we move along here. And also included a photo of 
a British 5.5 inch gun manned by a Canadian gun crew in World War II. This artillery set is from Fusilier Miniatures number WW132. It's stated to be the World War I British 92mm howitzer with crew. It's a bit larger than some artillery sets and I've added some brass 22 caliber casings to give it a little added splash but don't ask me what the real casings would look like. I have no idea. Well, that concludes this episode. I do have other artillery pieces, but they are castings which I have yet to paint, so maybe that'll be another episode in the future. Until next time, if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to hit the like and or subscribe button. Until next time.